I was looking for a river metaphor that would apply to the politics ahead in 2023, but there are just so many. Rivers, turns out, make for great metaphors, and few rivers speak to the history and ecology and the spirit of New Jersey like the Passaic River. If all you know about the Passaic is what you see from Route 21, a documentary called American River will probably surprise you. Let's take a quick look. It's the river that really built New Jersey. It's the river that, in many ways, built the country. The river is no longer the river once was. It's a polluted waterway. Not just any polluted waterway, it is one of the major polluted waterways of the United States. It's illegal to catch crabs in the whole lower 17 mile stretch of this river. If you want to find the polluted areas, you can test the soil, you can test the air, so forth, or just check out the economic level of the people who live there. We not only will fight for this, but we deserve this. This is a community that has been for too long separated and divorced from a connection to this river. Joining us now to talk about American River, our author and aquatic ecologist, Mary Bruno. She's the film's narrator and producer-director, Scott Morris. Hello to both of you and welcome to Chatbox. Hello. Thank you. Thanks, David. So, Mary, I call you the narrator, but you're also a, a subject of this film, too, in the sense that the story begins with you telling us how the river was always like a monster to you. What, what triggered you to go back and kind of look it in the eye? Uh, well, let me answer it a little. first, uh, say that I, th I think of myself in the film as sort of the everyman, like the, uh, yeah. the, the stand in for the audience. Um, and, and what made me go back and revisit the Passaic is I, when I left New Jersey and, and started studying aquatic ecology and I, I became familiar with all these different bodies of water, you know, lakes and bogs and streams and rivers and just became so enamored of them, you know, the, just the, the wonder and the majesty of water. And it, it occurred to me while I was doing that, that it's so odd that I would have such a, a dysfunctional relationship with my hometown river. And, and what was that about? And the more I thought about it, the more I started researching the Passaic. And the more I learned about the Passaic, the more I realized how ignorant I was of its story, which was fascinating and, and tragic in some ways. Hmm. And, you know, so books kind of have a way of um, having a way with you. <laughs> And the Passaic would just really wouldn't let me go. And finally, I thought, OK, 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 I'll write about you. Scott, I'm always fascinated and, by the how of a film like this. I imagine you had some GoPros on the front of the kayaks. Uh, what's a crew like for this? And and what were some of the challenges here? Well, it was a very ambitious project. Um, and I had reached out to Mary Bruno in the spring of 2018 about whether she would um, go on a a new kayak trip down the river. And I was fortunate to have uh, a, a, a really good person behind me to fund the project, uh, Dylan Kirby. And um, I mounted a very ambitious project. I mean, the, I wanted to cover the entire kayak journey from the source to the mouth, which was four days and 80 miles. And uh, I had Mary and Carl, who were these two really kind of dynamic, entertaining subjects. Um, and, and so we, we mounted a, a large production. We had a 15 person crew. I had um, 10 cameras and uh, including there were GoPros on the kayaks, uh, but much of it was also covered by uh, uh, cameras on foot, cameras in a camera boat, uh, a drone, which was we had a really nice gr drone. Great crew. Shots. So yeah. There were upwards of 10, 10 cameras rolling um, and capturing the entire trip in, in practically real time. Uh, we spread it out over two weekends, so we had some time in between to catch our breath. And also in between, we would go back and interview several of the myriad of people who are featured in the film, you know, the residents and, and advocates along yeah. the way. Uh, so, so it was a very ambitious project. And we also, it took years to edit. Mary, tell us about Carl, your traveling companion. Oh, Carl. Carl is, uh, well, first of all, he's very knowledgeable about about water, about aquatic plants. He's he's a totally great and very daring, you know, dare I say, daredevil kayaker. And so he was kind of game for everything. And and he was also just good company. You know, he he was chatty, 
if you wanted him to be chatty, he was quiet, he was really thoughtful. I mean, if folks who see the film will, I think, hopefully appreciate the things that he says are so sort of profound and interesting. But but the the, the best thing about him for me was that, and as I say in the film, is he was my courage because I, I grew up being afraid of the Pasek and with good reason. Mm. And so the idea of kayaking it, like, you know, getting in the water, maybe getting wet was kind of scary for me. Even someone who, who loves water and who's, you know, comfortable with paddling. And so Carl just gave me the courage to, to do it, to be on the water and not to be afraid. And there were times when we would run into these, you know, giant logs that we had to get across or under or around. And I would think, OK, that's it. It's over. Let's just go home. And you know, not, not Carl, you know, he would be boom. We'd find a way to get around that obstacle. And, and most of the time in this gymnastic way. And so he was fun. Scott, this film has has got it all. It's like it's a buddy pick. It's also an an adventure. It's a travelogue. Uh, I mean, how, how did that all come together? What did it start as as one project and end up being a different project in terms of the narrative? No, actually, I, I um, I, it, a lot of it's very strongly based on Mary Bruno's book, yeah. uh, An American River from Paradise to Superfund, which I had read and heard her do a book talk about. And that really gave me the foundation for the film. And uh, although I couldn't exactly mirror the story because a lot of the people who are in it are sadly no longer with us. Yeah. And we're also dealing with a 10 year time span between the trip that was in the book and the, the one we filmed. So things changed. And some of those changes we wanted to capture. But the essential structure of the story, and um, especially uh, what you, you say, Mary, is is the narrator, I always had questioned whether I wanted to maybe write a narration and bring in you know a voice of God narrator to right. fill in the missing pieces. But after meeting Mary and Carl, I, I thought that we could easily tell the story through their own words. So shooting the interviews with them, uh, which we did a couple of times before and after the kayak trip, really helped sort of flesh the story out. And uh, and also all the interviews we did with people along the way obviously aren't exactly the same as what was in Mary's book. And the, some of the people aren't the same, but I, I, had, I took my cues from Mary's book. Well, what were the best places to stop along the way? What were the features we wanted to really highlight? And what was the overarching story going to be? So in, in, in many ways, Mary and I were really true collaborators on this. And we both felt very strongly that we wanted to deliver uh, the same ultimately hopeful message. Mary, in the end, you, you talk about the story of this river and you tell it through these characters, everything from its most bucolic beginnings um, to, you know, what's happened to it once it's reached um, the, its lower portion. Um, tell me about some of the, the characters. Who stands out in, in your mind? In uh, Little Falls, uh, let me just back up a little bit. So Little Falls is one of the few places on the river, I think, that really takes advantage of the river's beauty. I mean, everything at Little Falls faces the river. So you see it, you enjoy it. And uh, Nick Beatty, who um, his great, great, great grandfather um, owned a carpet mill, which is now a condominium. And it's, it's a beautiful location, beautifully sited. And we interviewed him on the site of that carpet mill next to the river. And he told this great story about being like nerdy kids, he and his brother and a couple of friends from New York, and they would spend the summers out at the plant, the family you know, business in, uh, in Little Falls. And they would you know, have these adventures on the river, you know, of course, completely different than my experience of the river. Right. But one of the things that he said that was so soulful, he said that, you know, some people go to go to graveyards and, you know, but whenever I'm here, I, I come back to this place because, you know, the river is always here and it brings back memories. And that to me connects me with my family. And that was like a really sort of beautiful um, piece. And I also loved down at the lower end of the Passaic, Anna Baptista, who grew up in the Ironbound section yeah. in Newark and, you know, translated for her parents during all these, you know, protests against the dioxin spills, um, talked about how in order to succeed at change, changing things, getting the river cleaned up in this instance, you have to have radical optimism. And I love that term. Not that sort of like, you know, Pollyanna thing, like, oh, it's all going to be OK. Right. It's like, you know, you got to make it happen. You can't just say it's going to happen. Scott, the, the, the tragic part and the most hopeful part of this uh, film talks about the lower uh, section of the river, uh, which has been the most exploited and, and abused, but is also really the site of the, the great hope for the future, yeah? Yes, um, and certainly that was, you know, 
going to be part of the story from the very beginning. We knew that the kayak trip was headed headed for um, a, a disaster zone, really yeah. uh, one of the most polluted places in the country. Um, but that there was a community there, namely the Ironbound community, who was who really heroic. And as Mary has described them, it's not like they're they formed a beachhead to fight the bad guys, but they just sort of over decades resisted uh, and and helped form the, the, all of the efforts that went into cleaning up the river, creating that beautiful park that's there. And, um, and that's, we interviewed a lot of people down there, and those were really positive um, moments in the film. And you two uh, will be in Newark next week. Mary, tell us uh, about the event that's coming up at NJ Pack. Yeah, I'm totally excited about this. So the film will screen at the New Jersey Performing Arts Center in Newark on January 20th. Uh, tickets are five dollars. The screening is at as at seven p.m. Uh, they're selling like hotcakes, so get out there and get some. Uh, Scott and I and Carl also will be on hand afterwards for a question and answer with the audience. And you know, again, because Newark is so central to the story, um, and I was born in Newark, so I I, I feel particularly uh, connected to it. Uh, that's going to be a really exciting screening for all of us. I hope everybody can come. All right. Mary Bruno is all of us. And Scott Morris is the producer, director of An American River. Great to see you both. Thanks very much for coming on with us. Thank you, David.